One of the questions in, um, one of the parts rather of question six, which is not one I assigned, but question seven, which um, maybe you're up to right now, or maybe you've just gone past, um, relates very closely to it. So I want to show you how I've done it. I'm going to point out a couple of things that I alluded to in the morning class um, that I didn't explain. So let's have a look. What is the actual question? Here it is. They give you, um, they give you this binomial expansion, and then they ask two questions. They say, okay, well, standard question, what's the greatest coefficient? But then secondly, okay, what if I actually know what x is? What if we designate a particular value, like say two thirds, then I can actually know not just the greatest coefficient, but the greatest term, the whole thing, once it's all come together and simplified. So what is the greatest term? So those are the two parts of it. So let's have a look. The first part of this is pretty standard. So I just wanna walk you through it. You can see um, I've picked out what my kth and my k plus one coefficients are. I do my normal thing in comparing the ratio between those two. And then I crunch my numbers carefully um, to get down to an expression for what that ratio is. So there it is right there. But of course the whole point in finding what this ratio is, is that I want the ratio to be bigger than one. That means my coefficients keep on increasing. So that's why I've solved this inequality and this is what I've got. Now, I got asked the question before, like, at this point here, once you find this value that satisfies, or once you solve the inequality, rather, what, what do you do from there? I think probably this is the most concise and I think reasonably watertight way mathematically of moving from this thing here to then saying, okay, I'm going to then evaluate term seven or coefficient seven. Um, I kind of think it's a little bit weird if you remove, I know it's a bit awkward to write this big long thing, but it's actually very useful. If you remove that, just think about what the logic is saying. You're like, I've got an inequality. I've solved it. K must be an integer, so the biggest value that's, that is the solution to that is six. And then you go ahead and go term seven. Like that's weird. That's a bit strange, right? So I think putting it back establishes, like what does it mean? The coefficients are increasing from term six to get to term seven, I had to multiply by some number bigger than one. That was, um, that was the premise, right? So therefore, that makes term seven bigger than term six. And that is what is reflected here in this important part of the inequality, okay? So yeah, it can get a little bit long. Um, I will point out, if you had say like 50 terms, you don't need to write all 50. You might get up to um, the important one. And then after at some point, you just say dot, dot, dot. The rest of it is trivial, isn't it? You've gotten to the critical spot, the highest, the peak, and then the rest of it's unimportant. So that's how I've worked out the greatest coefficient. You already know how to do that. Now let's look at what happens again. This is the question. If I then designate a value for x, okay? Now you can see what I started with here was if I'm just interested in the coefficients, then I kind of just take x out of the equation when I'm working out what those bits are, okay? But now that x is given a value, I can include it in this. So I, I still have all of these pieces here, but have a look at the way I start part two. Can you see what's new? Can you see what's new? Let me highlight it for you. Um, right there and right there, there's the value of x, right? And it appears... Sorry, what have I done? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry, this one should say t. Um, this is the whole term. And just like I had powers of three quarters, which is just part of the coefficient, now I have powers of three quarters x, except, of course, x is a number. So that's why I've put it in there. And you can see because the threes cancel and it's two over four, that's why uh, in my lines below, you can see I've got a half, a half. And um, those should also, it still says CK, because you can see I actually just copied it. So um, those are my comparisons of the actual terms now. Everything else proceeds in exactly the same way as it did before. You still come up with an expression for what that general ratio is. You still go ahead and you solve that ratio. And then you get to here, right? Now, remember I said to you, if this thing is, an, is actually lands on an integer, right? That means you don't just have one greatest coefficient. It means you've got two. Now, I want you to think about why that is the case, okay? If it's for k is less than seven, okay? What happens at k equals seven? k equals seven. Well, I can actually just go back to my original line up here and I can just evaluate the thing. Like this is telling me, what do I have to multiply to get to the next term? Have a look. Uh, this, um, this is t. t k plus one on t k is gonna be equal to uh, four times nine take away seven, which of course is two, on seven plus one, which is eight. So this ratio is one, it lands right on, okay? Which means that to go, once k equals seven, to get to k equals eight, I multiply by 
one, which makes those coefficients identical. So that's why now in the next line you can see, yeah, C7 to get to C8, they're the same thing. So this is this is actually really nice. Even though it's like, oh, I have to write so many terms. But this is very meaningful. It shows, I understand, okay, there's actually not just one. There are two greatest coefficients. There they are. I can work out what the greatest coefficient is in the... Sorry, that number's actually wrong. I think from memory... I just punched this into my calculator a second ago. I think it's 1152. You can confirm that if you like. But I also can say, you know, the term next to it, on just to the right, is also going to have the same value. Okay. Yeah. Why is it not C6 and C7? Okay, it's not C6 and C7 because for k is less than 7, right? So, so value 6, it's still increasing. When k gets to 7, it's not increasing anymore. But it's not decreasing either, right? As I've just demonstrated uh, over, over here, right? So if k is less than 6, it's increasing. When k is 7, it's not increasing anymore, but it's not getting smaller. So k equals 7 is the biggest one because the next one isn't smaller, it's the same size. That's why it doesn't satisfy this inequality. The coefficients aren't increasing anymore, they just level, okay?